welcome to episode 197 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is June 21st, and together with Robert and Goran, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Okay. So in our last episode, we quickly mentioned how features and capabilities are constantly added to services in the cloud. We talked about this in the context of the Azure monitor for SAP solutions, but obviously these enhancements and optimizations are also happening on the lower level, especially in SAP HANA installations. IO throughput is super critical. In the past, SCSI was used to connect your disks to the VM. Now we can leverage NVMEs non-volatile memory express using Azure Boost. To tell us more about this and actually show how to convert your SCSI to NVMe um, uh, connections, I'm glad to have Philip Leitenbauer with us today. Welcome, Philip. Hey, everyone. Good to be back. Very great, great, great to have you. So, so, so Philip, um, before we dive into our topic, maybe you can quickly introduce yourself um, to the colleagues who have not seen you in our podcast before. Yeah. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Philipp. I'm based in Austria, Vienna. Um, that, that's basically my backyard, the vineyards of Vienna. Um, and I'm with Microsoft for about seven years now. Um, joined them in the sales team, uh, but now I'm part of the uh, SAP and Azure product group. Um, and I'm leading different programs that cover, you know, VM conversions, uh, customer reliability and so on. I think you're also very, very famous for introducing the quality health check, the, the, the tools that are now part of Azure Monitor and part of ACSS where customers yeah. can easily see what's happening with my SAP system. So I think uh, you, you've done, you have had quite a big impact already, I would say, in, in yeah, how I, customers can run their SAP systems on Azure. I, I think you and I know very well uh, how cool it is when your code basically gets to an Azure product uh, you, you've you've also dramatically contributed to the success of SAP on Azure, especially on the, all those Teams integrations and so on. <laughs> I really love those. Uh, but yeah, it's it it was an amazing feeling to to see your code basically getting a first party product. Um, that that's I think a goal everyone uh, would like to achieve, and uh, there is more coming. So we we are working on new things there. Uh, but uh, I'll I'll be back uh, as Arnold Schwarzenegger always said uh, to to <laughs> cover those Austria topics. To another. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> no, perfect. And now you have brought us a very a very new topic. You you actually just yeah. released a blog post. Um, I think this or last week on this. Yeah. So um, maybe maybe you can explain a little why this is important or why this is great. What what's new? Um. Why should customer do this? And actually also how customers can do this. So, so you're not only talking about why this is cool, but, but you have actually really all the powers, um, 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 the PowerShell scripts to outline how to do the conversion. To, so, yeah. so I thought that was also really cool. So maybe let's, let's dive into the topic. Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, I, I want to start with a short introduction on Azure Boost itself. So it's not mm -hmm. that that is an SAP specific topic, but rather an optimization of the Azure platform itself. And um, as many of you might know, but you know, actually the challenge is that for so long it has been SCSI disk, nobody really paid attention to what this controller type we use from a mm -hmm. hypervisor into the operating system. But with uh, more bandwidth required, more IOPS required, and lower latency, um, the, the SCSI protocol itself, which by default is not like the most effective one when it comes to um, uh, storage throughput and so on, had to be updated. And that's what we did. We basically now present the uh, remote disks. So there is nothing changing in the back end. You don't need to mm -hmm. do anything. We just changed the way how we present the uh, disks in the operating system. So they now are shown as NVMe devices if you uh, select uh, the NVMe uh, option. Okay. You can do that 
uh, when you deploy the VM. So on the options tab, there there is a little tick box that says, "Hey, um, you you can add that uh, in in the deployment process." But a lot of our customers actually already have their SAP system deployed, and then they change their VM type because they need to grow in size, for example. And then it's a matter of you know how fast is my backup, how fast is my HANA start, how how fast are all those operations that require a very high throughput and very high IOPS. So to cover that, uh, I'm gonna shortly introduce Azure Boost um, and and basically say. Um, Previously, it was like the hypervisor, so we, Azure runs its own hypervisor on top of the hardware, and then we had the customer VM, uh, but certain operations needed to be handled by the, uh, by the hypervisor itself. So within that host operating system, we run things like uh, agents, storage, and network I.O. Now, when, when we think of the new scenario, then some of those things are moving. And that means we have uh, FPGAs, so um, basically cards in the servers that are programmer, pro programmable with our code. Um, and that means we can, in, on the one side, increase the number of vCPUs provided to the customer because we don't have the requirement on the host operating side anymore. And on the other side, we are offloading the whole uh, workload into the card. And that basically provides us uh, a lot of advantages. Now, um, when when we think of the future scenarios, uh, then it's of course, uh, and and Mark Rosinovich covered that in in different sessions already. So if you're interested, uh, check out the YouTube links on Azure Boost. Um, the it's basically a system on a chip. So there is an ARM processor running on that card. Uh, taking care about those things. And then on the one side, we have the VMs that directly then consume those services, for example, using PCIe devices. So PCIe within the client virtual machine is like super fast and the NVMe devices are presented as PCIe devices. And therefore we can then pass through directly to the network backbone uh, and increase the speed and the throughput. Now to give you an idea, so the EBSV5 series, so everything that has a B in it, for example, okay. uh, is enabled for uh, NVMe, and uh, some M series are as well uh, enabled for NVMe. So everything like MV3 instances have the option to run SCSI and or uh, mm -hmm. NVMe. So the, both options are possible, uh, but the big difference is that you will see a dramatic boost in IOPS. So, you know, going from 160,000 to 400,000 IOPS, wow. so a fact of 2.5 or having 10 gigabytes per second on remote disk throughput where we had like the two or three or four gigabytes per second, um, that is like a, a dramatic huge mm -hmm. improvement uh, compared to the other thing. And in addition to that, uh, by increasing the network speed on those cards, we now have basically also 100 gigabit, ne uh, gigabit network throughput. So going from those uh, 30 gigabits to 100 is also a huge step. And um, as you might know, we do not over provision anything. Uh, so those is ba those capa uh, capacity values are available in the packet. Now um, to mm. give you an idea, and then we'll jump into the blog. Um, to give you an idea, so on the left side you would see the uh, architecture as it is with a SCSI VM. You have the remote storage. You have the Azure software. There is a VM bus. Uh, SCSI interface that is going into the virtual machine uh, and the, the SCSI uh, disk is then going through Hyper-V into the VM bus into the uh, remote storage. On the other side, you can see that the VM now has direct access to Azure Boost, which has the direct access to the remote storage. So we are completely bypassing uh, the software that is running on the host. That means we can up, we, we can still update and uh, add new features uh, on the platform itself. So as it's FPGAs, we can program uh, the underlying hardware with new features. Mm -hmm. um, and, and on the other side, it's also increasing security. So security is also top of mind for everyone in the industry. Um, and by having those uh, confidential VMs and trusted VM launches and so on, those are really key uh, for success to have virtual machines completely isolated and Azure Boost also enables uh, those capabilities. 
Now, um, a last slide before we jump into the blog. Uh, it's basically two steps that you need to do. First, you need to prepare your operating system and then you can convert it. And there is no, you don't have to have any fear of, you know, oh my God, my VM might not come back and did I do everything correct? You can always revert back. That means you can change to NVMe and if your VM doesn't come up or has a problem and you access the serial console on Azure, uh, you can still shut it down and convert it back to SCSI, fix your problems and, and then do again. So um, it's not that that's like a one way street. You can mm -hmm. always go back uh, and, and you know, do, do some different things uh, and try that out. Now, to go into the blog, uh, so it's available on Tech Community. Uh, you just have seen uh, that graph and I'm highlighting the uh, different advantages in the beginning. Let me make it a little bit bigger so everyone can see it. Um, and what is changing from an operating system perspective is the way the devices are presented. So while, you know, the OS disk was slash dev slash SDA mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. slash, and then the temp disk was uh, slash dev slash SDB, and then the first data disk started with SDC, it's now a new naming convention mm -hmm. where uh, the OS disk is always NVMe 0 and 1, um, and then the first data disk starts with NVMe 0 and 2. And the, the temp disk, the internal resource disk, is still presented as a, as an NVMe okay. device. Mm -hmm. uh, SCSI device, yeah. SCSI, yes. Yeah. So uh, from, from here on, you can check on what you need to do. So check your virtual machine if it supports. There is a list of um, virtual machine types that support uh, NVMe already. There is the link to the documentation so that you're always up to date. Uh, then you uh, prepare your operating system for readiness um, and then you convert it and then you check your operating system. Mm -hmm. So you can see that, for example, uh, the M, M series medium memory is already in production. Uh, we just released, for example, also the very high memory to a limited private uh, limited private GA. So the 32 terabyte VMs, they also support NVMe, of course. Um, and that is like super critical. Just imagine, you know, a 32 terabyte VM, if yeah, you yeah. need to load HANA in the beginning and you load like 16 terabyte of memory, uh, then it's a difference whether it's running at four gigabytes per second or eight gigabytes per second or 10 gigabytes per second. Um, and the same applies for other areas as well. So if you're running your Windows SQL or your um, Linux Oracle or whatever, so all those big databases that have a high uh, IO demand can benefit from NVMe. Mm -hmm. Now, the second thing is you need to check your operating system for NVMe readiness. Um, and that is basically related to um, the 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 NVMe capabilities. So NVMe requires drivers inside the operating system. Um, and when you, for example, run SUSE and you do a kernel update, it only compiles the required oh, okay. modules into yep. the kernel. Okay. Yep. So the fun thing is that the default image that is on the Azure gallery has the NVMe driver in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you deploy, it, you can deploy it to uh, NVMe or to SCSI. But as soon as you then do, for example, a Cyber update and, and you get a new init RD, it basically compiles only the things that are required. Yeah, that means yeah. uh, then uh, suddenly the NVMe support is gone. Okay. And that would mean that your mm -hmm. VM would not come up as that init RD, that small kernel that, mm -hmm. that is used to boot your Linux VM, uh, doesn't have the NVMe <clears throat> capability. So, what we need to do is basically prepare the operating system that those NVMe features are included again. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you can check the, the type, you can do that using PowerShell, you can do that using Azure CLI, you can do that on the portal itself. Nice. So you yep. can see that here is, it's like SCSI, this controller. And then I built a pre-flight check script. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not like you do that every day. So we want to make it easy. Um, and you can just copy that command. So it, you can run it directly with curl or wget. Uh, and it will automatically execute, as you can see, the SH mm -hmm. at the end. And what it will do, it will check for the NVMe modules, it will check the uh, group configuration, uh, and it will check FSTub. Because, you know, you, you could have slash dev slash SDC1 as your partition mounted to a file mm -hmm. system. Now, if uh, the NVMe is enabled, suddenly it's a new device. 
Yeah. And yeah. and that thing, that script will automatically convert your FS tab uh, nice. to, yeah. to your UID. So uh, independent whether it's CASI or whether it's NVMe, it's basically then always using the unique identifier, um, and then it, it's basically done. So here is an example of a, of a VM that I did. Uh, I, I ran the script, so it starts, then it says, hey, you are missing the NVMe drivers, okay? And it mm -hmm. will not do anything out of the box. That that was critical to me. Uh, we are thinking of a, a flag uh, to add, for example, then it will automatically execute those. So uh, you could then scale it like a little bit bigger, but um, it, it was- This is just reading for now. This is it, just it, reading and perfect. it will tell what to do. So you need yep. to create a directory, you need to, um, add something to a file, so add the driver NVMe and so on, uh, and then you for for SUSE you run Dracut, uh, and it will create a new init RD. Then it checks the group configuration, it checks the FS tab configuration, um, but everything else was fine for me. So what I did is I added, uh, uh, I ran those commands. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you can see that Dracut finished and created a new init uh, RAMFS directory and in init RD. Uh, so a new image was created, mm -hmm. and then uh, the operating system was basically ready. Mm -hmm. Now you can uh, run the, you can stop the VM and then run the script, or you can run the script and it will stop the VM for you, uh, depending on what you want. Uh, uh, so the first step is then uh, basically download the partial script. It's also available on GitHub. You can download it just on your own as well. And then it's a pretty straightforward step. So you can uh, run this at the script, add the subscription ID, uh, add the resource group name, uh, the VM name. So we need to scroll over here a bit. Um, then the disk controller type that you wanna convert to. So, you know, you can enter SCSI or NVMe. Um, and then if you wanna change the VM size because your current VM doesn't support NVMe, that's also already built in into the script. So uh, in my case, I'm changing to an E64 BDS V5. Uh, and what will then happen is it says, hey, OS disk found, um, getting a, an access token using PowerShell so that it can run all those ARM requests. Uh, the commands are not in, built into the platform or Azure CLI or PowerShell yet. So what I'm doing is I'm running an ARM request using uh, a REST API. Um, and I'm changing the operating system disk to support both SCSI and NVMe because otherwise you, we won't be able to change that. Now, mm -hmm. then I'm checking whether the uh, SKU that you provided actually exists. So if you had a typo, it will fail. Uh, yeah. And it will also check whether the new SKU supports NVMe, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and then checking for trusted launch support and so on, and then it's stopping the VM. Um, then you can see that that is basically the command of conversion and updating all the scripts, setting the OS disk, getting the VM configuration, updating the VM, and then it's basically done. And you can decide whether the, the script should automatically restart your VM. Mm. So to, to keep everything like super tight together from a timing perspective, you can uh, let the VM uh, or, or let the script stop the VM, convert everything and start it again. So you have the shortest uh, possible time when it comes to the downtime required. And afterwards, you will basically see that uh, on the disk controller type here, you have NVMe, or you see also see it again in uh, Azure Power, uh, in PowerShell or in Azure CLI. And then you can log on to the operating system. And what you will see is when you have the NVMe uh, command installed, so you can uh, install the NVMe CLI package, then you will see those NVMe devices Mm -hmm. uh, that are part of, part of a model called Microsoft NVMe Accelerator. Um, and then the last thing you can do is as, um, you know, sometimes those naming conventions are like a little complex when it comes to a lot of disks. Um, we, in, in the SCSI times, we had the dev disk, uh, Azure SCSI 1, LAN 0, LAN 1, LAN 2. So we had virtual devices you know, using UDEF rules. And I also wrote uh, a UDEF rule that we now support for SCSI and for NVMe. Uh, that means we now have a new directory called DevDisk Azure Data by LAN. Um, and the, you know, the, as the SCSI times are gone, we didn't want to use SCSI as a name. It 
would be misleading uh, in the UDEFs. Uh, so we also have that one, and then we will have by uh, LAN, by UID, and we are also working actually on code to present the uh, device name of the uh, of the disk inside the operating system. So if you call it data disk one, uh, you will see dev disk Azure data by device name and then data disk one. So that you know, then we're matching Azure against uh, uh, the, the operating system, but that will take us some time until we have that. Um, so you can download the UDEF file, run the UDEF ADM command, and then you're basically ready. Uh, and the other option for running UDEF is uh, my, my colleague, uh, Christopher, uh, created those uh, packages for uh, NVMe utils for Azure. Um, they are, we are working on integrating those with the big vendors, but if you can't wait, then you can go to the repo, uh, download the RPM, depending on your operating system and so on. So you can use the OpenSUSE one already for SUSE. Um, and yeah, then it's basically done and you have an NVMe VM. Really cool, really cool. I think it's some, some very easy to follow steps. Philip, from 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 your experience, maybe also already with customers, and how how long does does it take? I mean, ex excluding the whole reboot of the virtual machine, uh, virtual machine, and then potentially starting up Hana and stuff like that, but yeah. but really, um, how long does it roughly take? Well, the PowerShell script itself. So if you're pre the preparation can be done in advance, of course. Mm -hmm. So you can install the, the drivers. No, no production impact. You can create a new init RD, no production mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. um, the PowerShell script itself, if you like stop it, if everything is stopped in, inside the operating system and you let the PowerShell script stop it, uh, change it and start it, the PowerShell script itself takes about one or one and a half minutes. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So and it then it's done. Quick. Yeah, and then it just takes a while until the operating system is uh, up and running, depending yeah. on the VM size, of course, because if yeah. you have more memory and more CPUs, uh, the operating system simply takes longer to start up. But normally within like five minutes, everything mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. back online again and you can start back your databases. Cool. So if, if I would now start with a new VM, is yes. NVMe the recommendation? Is it the default or is, is, is SCSI no, still the default? Yeah, the default is still SCSI, mm -hmm. um, but we, we can go to, um, I didn't prepare anything, but we can go to the portal um, and I can show you. Uh, so we simply create a resource, virtual machine. Uh, and then we take a test RG, test VM, uh, Azure can choose whatever it wants. Then here, for example, taking Ubuntu, then we have uh, an uh, E4 AD SV5 here. So we can also change that to, for example, a B instance. Mm -hmm. um, then we go for a password because that will be the easier one for this scenario. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't care about the public ports for that point in time. Then you add your data disks. And then in the advanced section. Okay. You have here the performance. Mm -hmm. okay. So let me make that bigger. You have the performance NVMe enable capabilities to mm -hmm. enhance performance. And here you can then basically set a tick box. Now you can see that trusted launch is not supported yep. uh, for NVMe uh, at this point in time. So we would go back to basics um, and then say we go for a standard. And now we can go back to advanced and suddenly the NVMe flag uh, can be ticked. Mm -hmm. Nice. Cool. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, this uh, is really a setting in the in the during the creation of the VM right now. During the creation of the VM, yeah. And there's a cost connected uh, behind that no. decision. Oh, okay, great. No. So, Same and cost. Philip, I mean, obviously in in SAP HANA, um, we need to run on Linux, and and um, all the scripts yeah. that you showed obviously run on Linux. Just just out of curiosity, um, this also works with Windows, right? Or are, are there Windows drivers available? 
Yes, uh, Windows Server 2019-2022 support NVMe. Uh, and actually, you got me on the, let, let's say, right foot because we already started writing on the Windows version for the blog, <laughs> uh, but it will take me another week or two, and then we hopefully can publish that as well. Cool, perfect. So the script itself will be will will be the same. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of is the operating system ready uh, and and so on, checking those uh, prerequisites, and then you can take it. Perfect, perfect. So, so, so the, the recommendation is clear that um, customers should go to yeah. NVMe if possible. I mean, if they are already on a, on a virtual machine that supports NVMe, yeah. then um, without any costs, additional costs, um, they get much, much higher throughput, which obviously yeah. is always good, especially in, in SAP HANA um, situations. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm thinking of... It, it, you know, if if we could run something like HCMT or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that that I think that would be a funny thing. Yeah. Um, as a next step, uh, thinking of, you know, creating some kind of I/O performance uh, comparison between NVMe and SCSI. Um, so definitely, if if you leave a comment in the YouTube, uh, <laughs> then then. Uh, and and say hey we want to have a video or uh, a blog article about what what is the difference, uh, then we're going to work on it. Perfect. So one question regarding regarding support for uh, uh, is there any limitation or plan to support some older version of uh, virtual machines like E series four or, or is just no. somehow? Yeah. So there there is now? yeah there is that hard requirement of having those FPGAs in the okay. servers that have that programmer per mm -hmm. SOC on board. So okay. um, it's, uh, while, while, you know, in, in Azure, it's basically a V3 instance could run on your hardware, but it will still have the same performance characteristics and settings and capabilities that it had in the past. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, if you choose for a V5 instance, then you have those uh, capabilities okay. for NVMe. Okay. So okay. uh, as as the VMs can, you know, walk around the data center, it's uh, it's it's basically not guaranteed that you are then always running on a certain generation of hardware, okay. um, and that's why we can't have those capabilities in previous versions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Oh, well, great. Thank you so much, Philip. That was very, very insightful. And I think um, a very good, uh, uh, another case where you can see there's constant evolution in things that come into the cloud. So it's always good to follow a podcast like ours to get mm. the latest and greatest information. <laughs> Thank you so much, Philip. I, um, as you, as you already mentioned, we will have you again in the, in, yeah. in the future. You will be back. I, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. <laughs> and yeah, with this, Thank you so much and yep. talk to you Great. soon. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.